Hey guys, Chris Brumfield. Um, as some of you may or may not know, uh, I recently did a uh, fall turkey season in Maryland. Um, we got there, I got there on the 29th of October and we hunted until the 1st. I'm sorry, uh, the 3rd of November. Um, so with fall turkey season, it's a little bit different than, you know, when you're, when you're hunting in the spring, um, birds are more responsive. They respond back to you. The, you know, that they'll come to you or they'll make movements, movements to where you know where they are and, and you can kind of set up a little bit, um, better than what you could in, in the fall. Uh, from my experience when I when I hunt in the fall, uh, particularly up at Green Ridge in Maryland, um, my ex my best um, way to find turkey is just driving the roads. Uh, Green Ridge has uh, I mean a multitude of roads that go throughout the whole uh, game land. Um, so what we do when we're looking for turkeys is, is just get in the truck and drive. Uh, we usually drive, you know, speed limit 15 to 25 miles an hour is usually what we try to keep it at. That's, that's what we found that, uh, we can see animals a little bit faster, um, uh, and, and be able to actually see them because if you're moving at 35 miles an hour, it's going to be a little bit harder. Uh, so anyway, that's that's what we do. Uh, we drive around, and if we find a, a flock or even just a couple birds, you know, we number one, we try to scatter them. Um, and the reason why we want to scatter them at that point is because if we get in, you know, get set up really quickly within probably 20 minutes, we stand a fairly good chance of being able to call those birds back into where we busted them from. So once we bust a flock, you know, with the vehicle, uh, we'll rapidly try to find a place to park. Uh, to get all of our gear out, to get ready, all that stuff, and, and make a game plan of how we're going to set up. Uh, typically, what we do is, like, if we have four guys in our party, we'll just do a line. Um, you know, be horizontal with one another. Uh, and I'll try to call them back with some key keys on, on the trumpet. Um, and that's, that's worked in the past. Um, another thing that you can do if you see turkeys and they don't break up, um, is just hunt that area. Uh, you know, come back in, in the morning, you know, hopefully they have an established routine being that it's in the fall. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, you know, just like our trip that I just took, uh, last week to, to Maryland. Um, we had seen this flock of probably, I don't know, 20, 20 turkeys. And we stopped the vehicle, got out, started looking at them through, through the scopes and, and binoculars and all that stuff. Um, I had, uh, the crosshairs on a hen, um, and I was, I was running through my checklist of, you know, vitals and where am I going to hit her and, you know, what's behind her and all the things that go through your mind. Uh, and I decided not to pull the trigger. Um, uh, I happened to see, uh, what looked like a Tom to me mixed in the group and kind of sidetracked me from her and, um, but I never, I never did get on him. Uh, and that was probably a shot that I wasn't going to make. I, I was shooting a 22, um, Magnum. Uh, I think in the right circumstance, uh, 
it, it would be a good round. Uh, but after this hunt, I think that if if I do go uh, back to Maryland and hunt that way again, I will probably use a, a two two three, uh, and maybe keep the twenty two uh, in the vehicle as well with my shotgun. So it's just really kind of in in the fall in Maryland, you're you have more options available to you. You know how you're going to hunt. Um, and, and that could be dictated by where the birds are at on, on the terrain and, and how they're situated and how close you're going to be able to get to them uh, and stuff like that. So you got to make those decisions of what gun would be best uh, for that situation. Uh, and I I'm, I'm, will be in the future if I do go back to Maryland uh, probably carrying uh, 223 uh, 22 Magnum and my 12 gauge. Uh, in the past, I've only carried my 12 gauge, um, but I think that there's been some situations that I've seen that um, I, I probably could have uh, uh, capitalized on uh, had I had the right weapon with me. So, um, one thing that you know that I did want to discuss is. Uh, what we did this year that we haven't really done, I mean, we kind of sort of did it, but not to the level that we did this year. And we were there to turkey hunt and look for turkeys, but we spent 95, 98% of our time uh, driving around looking for turkeys. Uh, we were actually um, squirrel hunting and deer hunting at the same time so and so if you've done this a number of years and done it the way we've had uh for the, for as long as we have um it gets a little mind numbing um you know just driving all those miles looking through the woods it, it just gets mind numbing it gets very boring um and you got to find ways to entertain yourself. Um, so what we do is we carry a, a 22 uh, for squirrel and a crossbow for uh, deer uh, for the seasons at that time of the year. Um, so this year I had the 22. The guy that was with me had the crossbow, had multiple occasions um, I, I shot, um, four squirrels, uh, probably should have shot some more. Um, my buddy had, uh, at least probably three different times where he, he probably could have taken a deer, uh, but it just didn't work out. Um, so I tell you this is because if you're trying to stay motivated, you need something to do than just driving, you know, through the woods, right? Because that's boring. Um, so what you do is if you start using this hunting technique, and of course, you know, you got to have, at that time of the year in Maryland, you had to have orange on, you had to be off the road, all that stuff. So you got to take that into consideration, you know, how can you hunt something and entertain yourself and also make sure that um, <coughs> excuse me make sure that you know you're staying within the law you know but that's what we did uh, had an enjoyable time um, one morning when we set up on turkeys, actually, I, I climbed up this really tall hill, uh, probably about halfway up it, um, and that's where the birds were when we saw them the day before. Um, so we sat down, and within, I don't know, the hour, um, big fox squirrels, uh, big gray squirrels, not, they were bigger than the squirrels that I had seen previously the days before. 
uh, just driving beside the road. Um, so these bigger squirrels seem to be a little deeper in. Uh, not much, but a little. So, um, you know, if you get the opportunity to, to hunt squirrel while you're turkey hunting, like how I'm describing, find a good food source. Uh, just happened to be when we came out uh, in the afternoon, there was a bunch of walnuts there. So I'm thinking that maybe the squirrels are draw, drawn to that area because of the walnuts and the other mass trees. And that's why you have, you know, the big squirrels up there where they are. Um, so, yeah, check it out. Um, just to give you something to do um, when you're, you know, just endlessly looking for turkeys in the fall. Um, it is uh, a bit challenging at times. Um, they're just different uh, than they were in the springtime. Uh, they, they're just a totally different bird. And, and you got to, you know, it's been seven years um, that we've been doing this. And uh, we're learning a lot, uh, not not a, enough to make us an expert, but um, we're getting there, and it, it's it's different. There's definitely a a, a learning curve um, compared to the springtime. Um, so yeah, all right. Well, um, please like my page. Um, I'm gonna put a, a, a PayPal link down at the bottom if, if you want to uh, donate or, or uh, you know, purchase a call off of me or, uh, and that brings up some other things. I just finished up my, my shop. Um, so if you go to my, my Facebook page, Chris Brumfield, Turkey Calls and More, um, the reason the more is there is because I'm going to get into some fishing products. Um, either doing some videos of walleye out on Lake Cumberland. Uh, striper fishing videos. Um, I'm, I'm dabbling with uh, building rods uh, for walleye. Um also getting into some other things. Um, so I don't know. Uh, probably right now I'm going to start with, you know, the fishing videos. Uh, probably making some, um, some baits of my own, particularly crankbaits uh, for walleye. Um, but there's other things uh, that will be coming. Um to kind of round out my whole um, portfolio of, of my business. Um, so if you would, um, you know, give me a like. Uh, if you feel like sending donations, uh, it's cmbrumfield at gmail.com. cmbrumfield, I'm sorry, cmbostc at gmail.com. All right, thank you.